So you got yourself one of these, a BBC Microbit, and now you want to program it using Microsoft MakeCode. Well stick around because in this tutorial of our Microbit basic series, we're going to explore the MakeCode website, how it saves our code, and how we can download our program to the Microbit in just a moment. Hello world, it's the Surfing Scratcher here, teacher, surfer, programmer, and lover of learning, bringing you the goodness of learning through code. On this channel, we code projects together using video tutorials, so if you're new here, consider subscribing. Be sure to check out the show notes and links in the description below, where I list out a bunch of resources and unplugged activities that can help you along on your learning journey. Alright, let's get stuck into it. Alright, so to program our micro bit, we need to head over to the Make Code Editor. And to do that, we're just going to go to Google and type in Make Code Micro bit and click on the first hit. That'll take us to the Microsoft Microbit Make Code Editor. And to get started, we will just press this new project. So here we are in the Make Code Editor. The first thing that we're going to do is just give a name for our new project. Let's now walk through the various elements of this editor. The most obvious starting point is probably over here where you can see a simulated version of a micro bit. It works just like the micro bit that you have at your place or that you're planning to get. You can click the buttons, you can click the pins as well. You can also simulate some of the other aspects of the micro bit, such as the radio communication. It allows you to emulate sensory data and user interactions. I encourage you to go through and explore what these buttons are. If you just mouse over them, I'll tell you exactly what they do. Okay, up the top here, you'll find a link to the Microbit home page, uh, another link here. Uh, you'll press this share link if you want to share your project, and that will uh, publicly store it on the Microsoft Cloud. You can also switch between our block editor and our JavaScript editor here, which is pretty neat if you're transitioning from more of a block style of programming to a text-based programming language. Okay, if you ever get stuck, make sure you jump through here in the reference and support. Heaps of good stuff. And you can also adjust some of your settings. All right, so this area here is reserved for our blocks or our JavaScript. And this central column uh, is where we can flip through all the different categories, pretty similar to Scratch, and check out the things that we can code. If you're ever confused about what the code block does, I want you to right click on it and go help. And that'll pop out this help window here. And that will tell you, give you a little bit more information about what that code block actually does. Highly recommend it. It's an event that runs when the program starts. The onStart is a special event that runs when the program starts before any other event. Use this event to initialize your program. So it's just like the green flag press in Scratch, if you're familiar with Scratch. All right, let's close this. Okay, so let's chuck some simple text in there to see what's going on here. So we're going to show some strings, some text. A string is just uh, a word for another name for a text value. So let's stick that in our on start block. And when we start, let's just go hello world. Great. So if I go ahead and click the simulator over here, well, it's already done it for us. It's going through and it is showing that text. Hello world. Now you might want to go ahead and put your name in here. I'm going to go ahead and put mine right there, surfing scratcher. So it'll start and now it says surfing scratcher. All right, now let's just have a quick look at these buttons before we move on to how to save this project. So if I press input, I've got this on button press. So let's drag one of those out and we're gonna go on button A press. Let's jump back over to our basic methods, our basic blocks, and we're just gonna get some icons here just to sort of test them out. And the icons refer to lighting up these LEDs. Right here, we've got a heart. Uh, we can go through and just scroll through the ones that are all built in there. So I'm going to click that heart, and if I go through on the simulator here and I press the A, the heart should show after Surfing Scratcher has finished here. There it is, right there. So we can go ahead and duplicate by right-clicking, and instead of a heart, we can go A for button B. And let's show a different icon. Let's show this little duck here. So I'm a bit annoyed with this uh, show Surfing Scratcher. So I'm just going to get rid of that now, and let's restart our simulator. Cool, so I'm gonna press button A. See how it's great at the moment? It means I can't press it. All right, there's our heart and there's our duck, which is pretty neat. There's a third button press where you can press both buttons at the same time and you can do that by going A and B. You'll see that what happened over the simulator, a third button came up here and that's the A and B press. So let's just go ahead and change that icon. Let's do this big kind of X looking shape. Let's press the A and B, and there it is up on the screen. As you're working on your project, it automatically saves to your browser's local storage. 
what on earth does that mean? Well, if I press this home button now, it's gonna take us back to that home page. And you'll see here, we've got an extra rectangle here that is the name of the project uh, that we named for our very first project, which is make curve mic a bit. If I go inside of there, it'll take us exactly back to where we just were. A word of caution on the browser's local storage. So it's safe there until it's cleared. Anyone who uses your computer will have access to your project. Perhaps a better way to save your microbit project is to go ahead and download it, which is what I've done here. I've just gone and downloaded my uh, file. Let's go and find it now. Okay, so here I am on my downloads folder and we can see here it's giving us this .hex file. All right, you can go ahead and save this file anywhere that you'd like. It could be on a USB stick, it can be in a folder on your hard drive, anywhere. So what we need to do now is connect our micro bit. Okay, so I've just gone ahead and connected the micro bit and it has popped up here in our side window. So I'm gonna go ahead and click it. So when you want to transfer your code from make code editor onto the actual micro bit, this is what you need to do. You need to take that hex file and you need to open up the micro bit that is now plugged in and it's just plugged in through my USB port. I'm gonna go ahead and drag that hex file directly onto the micro bit and now it's transferring across there we go it automatically says that the disk is not ejected properly and that's exactly what should happen all right so we've got the real micro bit in action here we press the a button we get the heart then we press that b button up comes the duck and then when we press both buttons together a and b here comes our x boom just remember your micro bit will need to be plugged into a computer or battery powered for it to work. Cool, so that's been our intro to the make code editor. We will be unpacking loads more in future videos. All right, it's time for a Cody question. And I wanna know what do you use to code your micro bit? Are you in Python? Are you using make code editor? Are you using JavaScript or the block editor? You might even be using Scratch or something I haven't even mentioned. Drop an answer in the comment section below. Hey, thanks for checking out this tutorial. Subscribe, like, and ring the bell if you're new around here. And be sure to have a scout of some of my other content, which is on the screen right now. If you can't get enough, then head on over to my Patreon page where you can join a membership tier for access to exclusive content. Link in the description below. But until then, I'm off to go find a wave. I'll catch you in the next one.